Nikola Modric is on the potential verge of a hydrogen breakthrough. Even though there are many critics around the viability of hydrogen for the transportation industry, there is no doubt in my mind that the engineers that actually work in this field understand the opportunity that hydrogen provides for decarbonizing long-haul transportation and heavy-duty trucks. And with the recent news that Nikola could be the recipient of a $1.3 billion loan from the U.S. Department of Energy for building a hydrogen hub, there is a massive opportunity brewing for the business model and hydrogen strategy that Nikola has laid out, which is exactly what I want to discuss in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, I want to address the big elephant in the room and explain where hydrogen technology is today so we can understand where it needs to be in the future for it to become a viable fuel for the future of transportation. You see, hydrogen today is used in a variety of industries. The only problem is that there's simply a little infrastructure available for the transportation industry, because obviously right now we rely on gasoline, natural gas, and even electrified vehicles. Well, I have a very big surprise for all of you. There was not a single technology, commodity, or innovation in the past 200 years during the Industrial Revolution that was anywhere cheap at the beginning of its life cycle. Even the most promising technologies on the planet today, like batteries, smartphones, and even the internet, was extremely expensive to operate at the very beginning. Because obviously at the beginning, there's very little economies of scale and efficiencies in the manufacturing, production, and selling of that specific service or product is very, very expensive. But obviously there's a very popular phenomenon called the cost curve, which is essentially what most technologies tend to follow over the long term as more production and output is added for those technologies, which at the end of the day reduces the cost in the long term. And hydrogen right now is in that exact same boat. As a matter of fact, around 10 million metric tons of hydrogen is produced in the United States every single year. It's just that that hydrogen is right now not available through dispensing stations at fuel stations for trucks because right now there are barely any electric trucks on the road itself. And so the whole argument around hydrogen being expensive, very scarce, is very dumbfounded because around 70% of all the hydrogen gas produced in the United States is used for the very lucrative petroleum refining industry and fertilizer production sector. And guess what? Both of these industries are critical for the backbone of the U.S. economy. And unlike what the media would tell you, there is actually hydrogen production units in almost every state in America, which means the economies of scale opportunity for hydrogen applications is very immense, even though right now the last mile infrastructure is simply not there. And unlike what all the wannabe engineers on social media would lead you to believe, hydrogen cost with renewable electricity is almost cost competitive with fossil fuels. As we all know, the main reason that green hydrogen, which is made from sustainable resources, is expensive right now is because electrolyzer costs are still very high. But as you can see, over the next 50 years, they're expected to fall exponentially. And right now, at least, if you're using electricity rates at around $20 per megawatt hour, which converts to around 20 cents per kilowatt hour, then you're actually almost cost competitive with fossil fuels at a 650 per kilowatt cost. And no, these electrolyzer costs are not for 40 years out. These are what the prices are today, which means right now as economies of scale grow and as manufacturing facilities come online, these costs will only continue to go down. And talking about the IRA itself, this act will reduce the cost of green hydrogen by another $3 per kilogram on top of the already declining electrolyzer cost. And so, based on this chart that could put green hydrogen cost well below $1.50 per kilogram of hydrogen, which obviously would make it extremely competitive with diesel and natural gas. Because guess what? If you do the math with an average per gallon cost of around 5.65 and the density of diesel, you come out to around $1.78 per kilogram as a cost for diesel in the United States. 
And with the availability and cost of diesel being the number one reason that many fleet operators don't switch over to electric vehicles, that is going to play very well in the hands of companies that are developing both battery electric and fuel cell solutions like Nikola Motors. And that's obviously going to be because the IRA provides tax credits across the entire range of hydrogen production. Because even if you're producing something like blue hydrogen, which falls in the 56 to 72% carbon emissions range, you're still going to be available for around 50 cents per kilogram of tax credits. And obviously Nikola not only is producing blue hydrogen with some of its investments in the Vabash Valley resource, but their main goal is to produce hydrogen with green hydrogen technologies like electrolyzers, which will put them in this rank right here for the $3 tax credit. But obviously that'll only make sense for them to do if the cost of electrolyzers right now is cheap and it makes economical sense for them to put in so much capex into something that is obviously a little bit of a risky investment. But to be honest, that risk is probably reduced significantly after Nikola recently announced that they were accepted into phase two of the US Department of Energy loan application process. I can't emphasize how important this is for the future of the hydrogen industry and the fuel cell market. Nikola right now has a Phoenix Hydrogen Hub LLC set up where they bought around 900 acres of land in the Arizona area to build a hydrogen hub to not only support the local economy, but also get their own fuel cell trucks on the market because obviously they need to solve that chicken and egg problem immediately. And like I just showed you, since electrolyzer costs are extremely high, if Nikola gets eligible for this $1.3 billion loan, they could have a massive gateway to commercially launching their fuel cell trucks and beating out most of the competition. And competition aside, this will massively stimulate the fuel cell industry in America because it'll reinforce the idea that hydrogen can be cost competitive with diesel if you make the right investments in infrastructure and production. Because as we all know, the only thing holding back hydrogen right now is cost and cost is highly dependent on scale. And for the folks that are worried about the demand for hydrogen, don't forget that hydrogen gas is already used in a bunch of different processes that were probably used to make a lot of the products that you use on a daily basis, like the metallurgy industry, the chemical production industry, and the ammonia and fertilizer industry, which is what all the food you eat relies upon for production. And because most fossil fuels contain hydrogen and carbon in various mixtures, hydrogen can be injected directly into pipelines like CNG and natural gas to supplement their own energy density and provide an application for end users. Because obviously natural gas can only be made by carbon polluted resources and digging stuff out of the ground. And it is obviously a limited resource, but hydrogen can be made from solar panels and wind. So hydrogen can completely replace the application and use case of something like natural gas while not having any of its carbon footprint. And the only way to catalyze the fuel cell industry and create demand for hydrogen as a fuel is by catalyzing production and producing a lot of it very fast. And right now, the only cost effective way to do that for most companies is using blue hydrogen. So it's better off in the long term to invest in resources and getting them online as quickly as possible instead of waiting for the cost of green hydrogen to fall because at that point it could risk absolutely no demand for hydrogen being created on time for all the production. And obviously that would plummet costs and plummet any sort of production investment. And many people tend to forget that hydrogen is still a form of electrification, meaning you're still reducing emissions on the consumption end, even if you're not reducing emissions all that much on the production end. That's the same case for electric vehicles because most Teslas on the road are still powered by coal or natural gas plants. It's just that the battery system allows them to not pollute as much compared to their ICE equivalents. And that is the same case for hydrogen. Because if a hydrogen truck can offer a 900 mile range like the Nikola 2 potentially can in 2024, then it will significantly offset the life cycle and production emissions of two 400 mile versions. And as for how Nikola is going to be tackling this chicken and egg problem with hydrogen, as you can see, they have already laid out a great ecosystem from production to supply, to dispensing, to really catalyze the hydrogen fuel cell market. 
They have production investments already in place for blue hydrogen and even green hydrogen facilities, and they have natural gas resources available whenever they need hydrogen to be made for any one of their customers. And obviously, even though many people have been criticizing Nikola for their lack of dispensing stations, allowing people to not fill up hydrogen for their trucks, this is actually a very good thing because they need to be patient and optimize properly for where these locations are actually going to be fitted. Because obviously, you need to make sure that these dispensing stations are available where most trucking routes are available. But obviously the thing is they can't build them out until there's fuel cell trucks already on the road. And since we expect them to be on the road by the end of 2023, that's when we can expect them to invest in dispensing hardware. Until then, it's all about getting funds allocated for hydrogen hubs for the bigger picture hub and spoke model. And guess what? This entire hub and spoke model revolves around the fact that hydrogen is a commodity and a fuel. Unlike electricity, you don't need to build permanent electricity stations, substations, and transmission lines to transport that electricity to charge an EV or support a house. With hydrogen, you can produce it locally and centrally and then transport it where the costs for production of hydrogen are much higher, which is obviously much cheaper to do than building transmission lines, which are obviously running at hundreds of kilovolts. And as we all know, transporting fuel in tankers is already a very well thought out and engineered business. It's actually much cheaper to do that than investing in a hydrogen plant locally where it might be much more expensive to make that fuel. And in places where renewable energy might be abundant and it might actually be cheaper to produce that hydrogen on site, Nikola already has partners in place to supply the infrastructure for those applications like Nell and Opal Fuels. With Nell being one of the world's biggest hydrogen production equipment manufacturers and Opal Fuels being one of the biggest RNG suppliers. But obviously guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.